The basic component of object-oriented programming language is a class. Now let us see what is a Java class. A class is a template for an object and an object is an instance of a class. A class can contain data members and methods or functions that operate on these data members. A class may contain only data or only methods. Class keyword is used to declare and create a class. Access controls are used to control the access to instance variables and methods of class. Java uses access specifiers in the declaration part to allow access of a member. There are three access specifiers in Java, that is, public, private, and protected. This table summarizes three access specifiers. In this class, credit card number instance variable is private, so only public methods defined within this class can access this number. You cannot even view or display the value of private instance variable since this class does not provide any method to display the value of credit card number. This is also an example for encapsulation of data and methods in a class. This feature of object-oriented programming provides the programmer complete control and programmer can restrict the access to data using encapsulation. Now we will learn how to create packages. Classes created so far were using same namespace that had no name. Java allows you to organize classes into packages that represent folders on your hard disk. You can create a package by simply providing package command as the first line in your program. The general form to create a package is package keyword followed by package name and terminated by a semicolon. Here package is the name of package. Java uses local file system to store packages. Now let us see a simple example. Suppose you are working in the folder e colon backslash java work. Then create a folder my package in this folder and save test.java in my package folder. Compile the java file. The class file must be in my package folder now. To execute a file inside a package, the execution command is bit different. In this case, it will look like this. Now let us see constructors. Constructor is a special method. You can create your own constructors when defining a class. Constructor is used to initialize object when they are created. If you do not specify a constructor in a class, Java creates a default constructor for that class. It is important to remember that class name and constructor name must be the same. This class does not contain any constructor, but Java creates a default constructor for this class. Constructor has no return type. Implicit return type is class type. This program shows a constructor with parameters. The constructor of this box class is more generalized and you can create objects by providing different values for different objects. When an object is created, you can specify arguments that will be used to initialize the instance variables of the object. First, two statements in main method create two box objects with different parameters. Last four print statements print the volume of both box object. Note that the instance variables are accessed by object name followed by dot operator and the instance variable name. Now let us discuss methods. A class contains instance variables and methods that operate on these instance variables. Method can have a single statement or a set of statements that perform a specific task. Methods may or may not return a value to the calling program. If a method has no return type, then you must specify void as return type. This method returns a float value. 
Here, the return type void shows that this method will not return anything. Now, we will learn get and set methods. The car class defines two methods that are set color and get color. The return type of both methods is void. Class car demo creates an object of car class. The default constructor of car class creates the object and assigns null value to it. The set color method is used to set the color of instance variable of my car object. Get method at line 19 prints the value of instance variable. The program finishes because there are no more statements. Now we will see how to use this keyword. When you define a method in a class, you can use this keyword to refer to the object of the class in which this method is defined. Although it seems redundant because instance variables can be accessed directly by methods of the same class, but it is helpful in situations when local variables that are given in the parameter list of that method hide instance variables. When instance variables and local variables of a method have same name, then use of this keyword accesses instance variables of the object on which the method is called. In this program, the names of instance variables and parameters are same that is hours, minutes and seconds. In this case, this variable is very helpful. At line 8, 9 and 10, this dot hours, this dot minutes, this dot seconds are the instance variables of the object that has called the method and hours, minutes and seconds are variables that are received as a parameter. Now we look at garbage collection and finalize method. When we create an object by using new keyword, memory is allocated dynamically and object is physically created. You have seen that we never reclaimed memory from the system. This is because of Java's garbage collection subsystem. Java automatically destroys an object when there is no reference to that object. This frees the programmer to remember and write code for necessary deletion of objects that are not in use during runtime. It also eliminates the risks of accidentally removing objects that may be required by the program. Sometimes programmers use objects to hold resources like file handlers and local operating system fonts. You must ensure that these resources are released before Java objects are destroyed. Java provides finalize method to accomplish such destruction tasks. This method can be used to specify actions that will occur just before destruction of objects. Now we will discuss static members. So far we have seen that data members and methods of a class can only be accessed by using object of that class, a dot operator, followed by the name of class member. Static members can also be accessed without declaring an object of that class. Static members are declared by using static keyword. Both instance variables and methods can be declared as static. Now we will discuss static variables. In this program, we have declared an instance variable at line 3. The name of instance variable is local. At line 4, we have declared and initialized a static variable A. Initialized it to 10. Line 5 declares another static variable B. Line 6 starts with static block. This block contains two statements. The statement at line 8 is commented because it is illegal to refer to instance variable in a static block. If you uncomment line 8, it will generate compilation error. Static block is used to initialize static variables. 
line 16 and 17 print the value of static variables line 18 is commented because it will generate compilation error non-static variables cannot be accessed in main method now we will discuss static methods static methods are declared by using static keyword we have been using main method in our programming examples it is a static method and is used before any object of that class is created static methods can only call other static methods can only access static data cannot use this or super keywords this example demonstrates a static method line 5 declares a static method this method is called in main method at line 16 static methods can be called without object and by using their class name 